Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. What's up, people's DC? Welcome back to DC's Nerd Talk. Let's start off with some news. So my collector's edition of Ghost of Tsushima is going to be a little late. GameStop has screwed me. So I went ahead and ordered it through my site. Now, I don't know when it's coming and I'm still going to do my unboxing. I apologize for anyone that was waiting on this. I wanted to do gameplay. I wanted to do an unboxing. I also wanted to do a live stream of it, but apparently everybody in the world is going to do it. So I will do some like live streaming of the gameplay of it. But, you know, I'm a little disturbed by that. This is like not the first time GameStop has done some dumb crap like this before. Uh, they literally told me that the game itself, um, I didn't check the uh, overnight delivery, which is total BS. I always do whenever I do pre-orders. But as I digress, the game is still coming. I will still do my unboxing, even though it will be late. I don't care. All right. So for the topic of this video, uh, we've we've talked about this before in the past. We've talked about it before we've mentioned it before i've tweeted it before there's been multiple videos and it's something that we've talked about in the generation for a long time right and it's the whole power conversation um to me it feels like this whole console thing has been console war has been deterred away from what the main the main reason of what gaming is or what gamers are about if you get my drift it's about games it's about new experiences it's about new ips it's about new experiences it's about different types of ways to play and i feel like we've been pushed around or the narrative has been changed and it's been changed by fanboys it's been changed by the media it's been changed by even high social influencers where now when it comes to console gaming it's power in the beginning of a generation it's always been power at first but as this generation ended it was power it's about the xbox uh one x it's about power it's about digital foundry and the sad part is that we had a discussion in the um uh king thrash's uh round tables uh discord and the way that this dude or you know some people that i've seen in the past is the way they're talking it's all about like the hardware it's not about the it's not about the games it's not about anything that intrigues your experience with the game it's it's to the point where now it's a lot of these guys they watch a video and they are hype about a video and then that's it then they wait for digital foundry to speak their piece and then they come with the graphics talk this is 4k that's not 4k when in reality some of them don't even know what the difference between ssr and the difference between ray tracing is some of them don't know the difference between checkerboard or native 4k even digital foundry is fooled at times unless the developer tells them or uh epic tells them that it's using ak assets or you need a magnifier but it's about looking it's about the canvas it's not about the it's it i don't know when it's changed from the game the art the experience to now it's the canvas and it's basically the the painting on it it's not about the experience anymore it's not about enjoying it anymore it's all about the graphical fidelity it's all about um how much power how much t-flops and to be honest even if even if the case was that the PlayStation 5 was going to be more powerful, it wouldn't matter because I know for a fact that PlayStation is going to try to give you games. And if Microsoft came up and just started delivering on games, that's going to push Sony to deliver more games. The thing is, that is, I don't understand how we've moved from this era where Sony has, has, uh, has always had market share worldwide appeal and trying to do different things they've been in the game for so long that people are like oh i don't care about sony i'm gonna push them out and this is the box i'm gonna deal with game pass power game pass power but they have yet to seen experiences that they want it's, it's i don't i don't understand how console war is this big thing how it's this thing that has like made itself its own nation in a way or its own 
embodiment of of what gaming is about if you get what i'm saying i personally feel that it's always been about the games i feel like it's always been about what the studio that creates the hardware can show you that is an experience that you can't get anywhere else for i posted a picture the other day of my son playing iron man in vr and he was mind blown he was blown away my son is playing video games before he's played different types of he's played marvel of the games he's played mar Alt ultimate alliance uh, three on the switch he's never been that excited about a game since he yeah he gets excited it's a new game he plays it he he's okay with it but when he popped on the vr and he played it for the very first time it is a completely different experience a wow factor for him we always talk about the story of what game you played what game did you play that made you a gamer something that turned you into a hardcore gamer what was that game because we've all played games before right but what has been that game that made you a hardcore gamer something that literally triggered you to say i love this this is a hobby i want to do because that experience was absolutely mind-blowing and i think that moment that my son played Iron Man in VR is that moment because you know what all he talks about now is VR all he talks now is escaping and playing something where he feels like he's in that world and that is his moment for me it was playing Ninja Turtles on the on the NES for someone else it could have been anything else it's it I feel like the experience or what makes a game experience it doesn't have to be vr it doesn't have to be um what is it like track and field or using a uh what is it like a connected gun or something like that it could be the game it could be the story it could be the world it could be how much you've played it for for a person like my wife she's gonna go back to final fantasy 7 because that was the very first game that she 100 percent completed at least seven to eight times in her lifetime and that was the moment that she decided that she was a gamer and the crazy part is she's played games before she's played super nintendo but there's always those experiences that makes you love gaming and I feel like we've completely disconnected from that. And it's all about hardware now. It's all, it's about graphics now. It's about the company that I like. It's about the company that literally does nothing for me as a gamer. It, it does nothing for me as a person. They don't put money in my pocket. They don't listen to me. It's about that company that is only caring about their own bottom dollar. And to me, that is mind blowing because I don't understand how it's about that now. It's when it has never been about something like that. It's been about the games. It's been about the experiences. We've come from an era where 16 bit graphics was amazing, but that's not what we cared about. We cared about the experiences. We cared about all of those things. And Microsoft has shown that there or has spoken on it that that's what they want to do because they hear their fans are doing that the fans want that or but the main fans that have the voice on the internet that are being tweeted by casuals across the world on twitter and when you meet and see these people that's what they see those same voices are the ones that create negativity they basically start up all types of shenanigans about hardware power game pass is something that is absolutely amazing game pass does this game pass does that you know but they never speak about what is in playstation now they never speak about what playstation has done you've got people that was in that discord that literally said i do not care about supporting the company that makes the game just give me game pass and I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm an, uh, I'm an older gamer, but I live, I like the fact that when I buy a game, I know that the developer is going to see some sort of success. There's a milestone to hit. You, when you, when you, when you're a person that, when you're a person that, let's say you've, you do uh, gymnastics or you're, or a runner, it's a, it's a number. It's something you've achieved. It's something you've passed. There's a milestone that is there right 
when you look at Game Pass, we don't see the milestone. We don't hear anything other than a Metacritic score. But at the same time, there are games that get okay Metacritic scores, but they also have millions of sales. They have fans that retweet those things. They have videos. They have deep in-game explanations. They have people that break down the lore. And even though that game didn't get the best review score, there's something that the developer sees that are milestones. You see that uh, Nintendo, when they break 11 million of, of um, um, Animal Crossing, right? When that is broken, to them, to, to Nintendo, this is a milestone. It tells the developer, people really want my game. And I'm not saying that there's a problem with Game Pass. Game Pass is an amazing thing. There's PlayStation Now, but people forget about that. There's over a thousand games that's on there. There's in the history of what gaming is about. People talk about backwards compatibility, playing games, older games that they love, but they completely forget about PlayStation Now that has from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 3, uh, PlayStation 2 games in there that are critically acclaimed games that people are forgetting about in due of a console war, in due of trying to push a narrative. I listened to a podcast the other day um, that was tweeted and these Xbox gamers go against the grain of what the developers say. And it to me, I don't understand what the, the whole thing about the Miles Morales thing. You have the developers come on screen and say that the game was re-engineered on the PlayStation 5, but they will spread misinformation to people that don't read these articles and say that this was built on the PlayStation 4. Granted, it's using assets of what was built on the, uh, to put on the PlayStation 4, but it was built on a hardware and re-imagine, re-engineered in 40 mapping, uh, fast loading time, giving Miles his own type of game mechanics so he's not anything like Spider-Man. So that being done only on the PlayStation and they're using that as an attack narrative saying that it's not a standalone game, it's DLC. But no one argued that Lost Legacy was DLC for the Uncharted series. But to push this narrative that they hate PlayStation, they will do something like that. I personally don't understand it. When it comes to July 3rd, 23rd, right? I want to see what Microsoft's going to bring back. I remember my time as a teenager playing Fable games. The stories, the lore, there it was freaking amazing. I remember the era of Brute Force, Jade Empire. I remember playing Knights of the Old Republic on Xbox. I remember my very first night camping out at a GameStop waiting for my my 360. I still have the original 360 right now. Still works. I played my first game was Need for Speed Underground. And I still remember those moments because at the time I didn't I didn't care about a box. I didn't care about a brand. I cared about games. That's why I still own an Xbox. That's why I still have Game Pass. So I I know we've talked about this before and it feels like I'm rambling on, but to me it's just mind blowing the things that they say because the Xbox has Velocity Engine. Uh, it's going to mop the floor with this with the Xbox uh, the, with the PlayStation Five. Why does any of that matter? Who cares if it has the most powerful hardware? Microsoft as all Microsoft, the very first Xbox is more powerful, but it, it still did not sell well. But Microsoft, this was their first jump into the gate. And what they did was they created games, they created experiences. And I feel like developers, I mean, I feel like gamers today have lost that touch where they only focus on the hardware, about the resolution, the number, the frame rate. Um, this has 25 T flops. Has when has console gamers cared about that? When has a console gamer looked towards a console and compared it to a, a PC internal graphics? When it came to console gaming, you looked at PC as if it was something that was above your educational skills in gaming. It was an it was it was not a hobby. It was like there are guys over there that are just geniuses that build those things. 
so I'm gonna stay with my box and I'm gonna play my games. And, and I get it's a weird, uh, it's it's a weird analogy, but that's what it was growing up. Like you're a PC gamer, dude. You're 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 like one of those nerds that build scripts that play games once in a blue. Right? That's what we looked at then. When you saw Console Gamer, they didn't care about what was in there. They didn't look to see what was in there. You 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 heard of a, like the N64 having a graphics pack. No one cared what was in that. You just played the games. And I feel like when these gamers shout these negative things, and then you have the develop the executives at Microsoft bigging up those things, re not retweeting in general, but you see them having the same behavior as those xbox fanboys or i call them xbox i won't even i don't even want to call them enthusiasts like extremists is is the word there are there are camps on the playstation side that do the exact same thing but they're also lost themselves i've been also a part of that myself and i apologize for that but i don't want gaming to lose its narrative again it's always been about the experiences. It's always been about intru introducing a new way to play. I remember the first time the Wii came out and people were mind blown. I can use my hands. I could tilt the controller to turn. It phased off, but there were people that are so intrigued with that gameplay experience now. You look at it, right, when the Switch is out and they say that they've added gyro mechanics or motion controls to a game, there's a ton of people that have come from that era that are intrigued, they're excited about that because it was an experience to them that changed the way gaming was. And again, it's not always a gimmick, it could be a game. It could be, who's, who's to say the next, uh, what is it, Sword Art Online is a VR MMO, period. That's gonna be mind blowing to people that play MMOs. And it's always about the experiences and it's never about the numbers of the graphics. Yeah, I've, I remember in the days it was always about the graphics in the beginning, but it always comes down to the software. It always comes down to how you play. By PlayStation adding VR, I wanted to see what VR would be like on the Xbox, what, would, what they would implement, what would they change, what would they add, but they took that away. I wanted to play Scalebound, but they took that away. And I'm not blaming Microsoft. To them, they thought that it wasn't a thing, but I personally believe that the hardware just couldn't handle it. And scaling it down would take away the experience, which is why I still stand strong about forward compatibility and supporting new generational games on older hardware. I feel that that is a bad move on any brand that does that. Even if it was Sony that did it, if it was Nintendo that did it, I feel it is a terrible way because it's gonna hold back experiences. You see articles from different developers saying that they have issues with creating their new 2020 titles or 2021 titles that are coming out where they felt that they had to take away features from a game because of lack of memory, lack of difference of things. So the power comes due to the developer. The gamer shouldn't give two craps about that. It's the developer that axes the, the manufacturer, Sony, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Hey, can you make sure your system has this so my games could work? It should never be the console gamer literally chanting the hardware. I don't know. I think I just wanted to just conversate with you guys about that. I know this video is super long, but Tell me what you guys think. This is your boy Dark Cloud uh, from DC's Nerd Talk. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if uh, how you guys feel. What was the game that made you a gamer? What was it that game that changed your experience? And what now has changed your experience? Do you feel that you haven't felt that same energy spark that made you a gamer? When was the, when was the last time you played something that made you feel like? that experience all over again. For me, it's VR. For me, it's multiple games. It's always been RPGs, but when a game captivates me emotionally, it tells a story to grab me. And when a game can do that, that's that experience again. But when I pop on the headset and I play GT Sports and VR sitting on my chair, 
with my noise canceling headphones feel like I'm literally in the cockpit of a Lamborghini hitting 150 miles, 200 miles an hour. Those are breathtaking experiences that change and develop and what's what can I say? Not develop, but levels me up on the experience of what gaming is about. Again, this is your boy Dark Cloud. Thank you for stopping at DC's Nerd Talk. As always, like, subscribe, and comment. Peace. All right, come get some dinner. <laughs>